Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. Rather terrifyingly, the first quarter of 2021 is done. The first three months are out, so we are into the second quarter of the year. Really quite scary because I swear it was January yesterday, but what that means is that it is time for me to do a beauty inventory update. The first part of this video is my beauty empties. Everything that I used up in the first quarter of the year. And then once we've gone through that, I'm going to go through what I've added in during the first quarter of the year and how that has affected my overall totals. So let's get into part one, which is my empties part of the video. For hair care, I have used up 11 items worth $89.85. Easy ones, first of all, I used up four sashi samples worth $4 each. The first two were the Living Proof Full Shampoo and Conditioner, which I liked. If I got full sizes of these, I would definitely use them up, but I wouldn't rush out to purchase them off the back of using this. They were just fine. Two that I did actually really like and potentially would purchase off the back of using were the Philip Kingsley Bodybuilding Shampoo and Conditioners. Again, two sashi samples worth another $2 each. These just left my hair feeling really clean, really not weighed down, but it didn't make my hair feel... Sometimes I kind of feel that these things that are for putting body or volume in the hair almost leave your hair feeling that sort of squeaky clean way that it almost feels a little bit dry and I didn't get that feeling with this. I felt like my hair still felt like nourished even though it was all about being weightless and giving volume into the hair because my hair is quite fine so it does get overwhelmed really easily but I hate it when it feels like squeaky clean in that sort of almost dry way which these didn't leave it so I would definitely be interested in purchasing these in the future. I've got a lot of shampoo and conditioner still to get through so it won't be happening anytime soon but I did very much enjoy them. Another shampoo and conditioner set that I used up are in co ones so these were obviously little travel size ones. These were worth $12 a piece. Again they were absolutely fine. If I got them again I would use them up again but I probably wouldn't rush to repurchase them. Again they didn't leave my hair feeling super squeaky clean or anything but I also didn't feel like they really volumised my hair. I mean, I think, to me, I think getting volume and texture in my hair comes from post-washing products, so more like texture sprays, mousse, root sprays, things like that. Basically, they were fine. If I got them again, I would use them again. I didn't hate them, but I didn't think they were anything mind-blowing. Although, I do think the longer I am in this beauty rehab, the less my mind is blown by anything to be honest. I sound so jaded. I feel like a really jaded old woman. Very rarely super impressed by a product anymore. I used up the Davines Oi Shampoo. This was worth $18. This is a really strange one. I have used these products before. I've been a big fan of the Oi range in the past but I felt like this bottle felt really heavy and really sticky in my hair. I don't know if it was expired and that was part of it. Um, Davines also are kind of a natural brand and I do feel it's not the fashionable thing to say but I feel like I prefer non-natural brands because I think they're more easy to control that what you will get in every bottle is the same whereas I feel like with more natural brands it's more likely that there'll be a difference from bottle to bottle so I don't know if it's to do with the natural aspect of this I don't know if it's that this particular bottle had expired if it had been on the shelf for a really long time before I got it and then obviously I have been on my no buy so it's been in my stash for quite a while before I've got around to finishing it. But yeah, I've really enjoyed this product in the past. I just didn't enjoy this one. I can't really explain it. I don't know if it's just that my hair has changed as well. I was listening to a podcast with a hairdresser who said your hair changes every seven years. Maybe the last time that I used this up would have probably been pre no buy or right at the start of my no buy back in 2018. So maybe my hair has changed at some point and my hair just doesn't like it anymore. I don't know but if this had been my first bottle of the oil shampoo I definitely wouldn't repurchase it. However I've used it in the past and felt positively about it so I don't know if I would repurchase it now. I feel like I'd be a bit nervous to repurchase it but it also wouldn't be completely off the cards. I also finished up this mini Kiehl's amino acid conditioner. So this was worth $2.85. It is a bit bigger than it looks because I'd cut it open. Again, this was fine. I definitely wouldn't rush out to buy this off the back of finishing it up. But it was fine. It smelled nice. It smells like coconuts. I just thought it was fine. Nothing special and it's not going to be the cheapest of conditioners to buy the full size of. So fine is just not good enough for me to buy from a higher end brand these days. So I will not be repurchased. Well, I didn't purchase this one. Obviously, this was a, a deluxe sample. Um, 
but I won't go and purchase the full size of this. The last three products that I finished up are all colour products. So first of all I finished up, this is again from Davines, this is the Alchemic Conditioner in the Copper shade. I absolutely love this mask, I have gone through so many of them, I have repurchased it and replaced it. It just injects a bit of vibrancy back into your colour so it's ideal for the sort of last two to three weeks before you get your hair dyed again. I've repurchased it, I think it's great. I've talked about it before so I'm not going to bore you by going on about it. And then the last two products are box hair dyes, which the first one is this Clairol Root Touch Up. This shade was a little bit too dark for me. I've counted these as being worth $5 each. I found this really easy to use. I would definitely get it again if I got a different colour, but this colour was far too dark for me. I actually made myself look like I had super dark roots, which I don't, my actual hair is slightly lighter than the colour that my hair has dyed. Um, so yeah, this was definitely too dark. The colour was not right, but I found the application very, very easy. I found it easy to use. It didn't make a mess. And if I could get the right colour, I would definitely get this again as a way of sort of prolonging needing to go and pay to get my hair dyed professionally, which is what I will be going back to doing once we're out of lockdown. And in the meantime, I have been dyeing my own hair. So I used this. Again, it's not quite the right colour. It's a little bit darker than I expected it to be. You know, given the kind of colour on the box, I thought it'd be a little bit lighter. I felt like it definitely came up darker in my hair, but I did like it. I found this a little bit more difficult because you were co covering your whole head. I feel like, I'm not sure I very evenly distributed it. I feel like it would be a lot easier to dye your own hair if you had a friend to help you, which obviously in lockdown, we can't have people into the house or anything like that. So. It's not something I'm saying I would never revisit again, but I feel like what will probably suit me and my budget in terms of trying to not spend as much at the hairdresser, but also wanting my hair to obviously look good, is to go back to the hairdresser, continue to get my hair dyed there, but then try and find the right colour in this root touch up and just use that to sort of prolong me in between appointments and that way my budget kind of benefits because I save a little bit of money by not going to the hairdresser quite as often but my overall colour will be not relying on me making sure that I've evenly painted my whole hair. So that is I think my plan going forward but in the meantime those are my hair care empties so 11 products worth $89.85. The next category of products to go through are the makeup products that I have finished up. As you can see there are five makeup products here and they're worth $150 altogether. First of all I've got my steel lip gloss here this was worth $22.00. Now this looks like there's products still left in there but if you watch my project pan update you will know that this has actually been finished. You can click it around as many times as you like and no actual further product is coming out. So I have finished everything that I can get out of it even though there is this tiny little line of product here that makes it look like there's product left but there is not. I'm not a massive lip gloss person so I won't be repurchasing this but I'm glad I've finished it so yeah I've got another Another three lip glosses in my project pan this year and once I finish them I am never buying a lip gloss again. So speaking of project pan, this NARS one was actually in my project pan last year and I forgot to put it in my empties. So it is finished. The actual inside's being finished. I like this, I would potentially buy this again. I know they've got other colours now and they've got like more nude colours that aren't maybe as shimmery and things so I would definitely potentially purchase this again but I might look for a different colour just to mix it up a little bit and I've finished up this Clarins lip oil again tiny little bit kind of in the bottom but I can't get it out I have removed the stopper so this was worth $26 I do quite like this but I feel like overall I prefer the instant lip perfectors like the creamy ones they're almost a lip gloss in that you can get them in colours and things but I do use them more as like a lip balm treatment and I just prefer them in my lips I feel like I enjoy the oil at the time but sometimes after it's worn off my lips feel drier than they would if I just put a lip balm on and let it wear off. So yeah, I would potentially get this again if I got it as a gift or anything. I would use it up again quite happily. I know my friend Lauren loves lip oils. She is powering through them. And I got a lip oil for Christmas, so I'm not remotely against them. I don't hate them. But I just feel like overall, in terms of making intentional purchases of my own going forward, I will buy... The Clarins Instant Light Lip Perfectors rather than the lip oils. I used up the NARS Climax Mascara. 
which is this one here. It was worth $24. I absolutely love this mascara. I would love to have it again. It was just so good. I was really, really sad when it kind of got to that point where it had definitely died and I couldn't use it any longer. The only thing I would say is that it's, it's a very smudgy one. Um, you have to lock it down if you are somebody who smudges like me, you need to lock it down with a tubing mascara, so just be aware of that, it is not one that stays in place, it is definitely one that transfers and gives you the panda eyes look, but if you can get past needing to keep an eye on that whilst you're using it, the actual payoff is great, it gives you really long defined lashes but they still get a bit of volume. This is what the brush is like, so it's quite a defined one but it's not a plasticky one, which is usually what I prefer because I feel like that gives better length and separation. And this gave that sort of length and separation, but it gave volume as well, but without clumping all your lashes into having like five lashes. I really, really enjoyed this. I would definitely buy it again. And the last product that I finished up was my Chanel face powder. Again, this was in last year's Project Pan, but I didn't finish it till this year. And this was worth $58 towards my total. There it is, completely empty. This powder was terrible, so Lauren and I both bought it and it hard panned so ridiculously quickly. Um, it was also just really like orange on my face. It was the number 10, which is a light shade, but it was definitely too dark for me. So I had to be super careful with how much I used, otherwise I would end up looking like I'd put orange powder all over my face. But the hard panning was the, the thing that was really bad about it. And Lauren's was exactly the same. So we did buy them at the same time. So potentially we got from a bad batch. I don't know, but yeah, there is no way I would ever purchase another Chanel powder because this was so terrible. And at that price, like, I just don't think that was acceptable. Um, the really annoying thing is that I love this packaging so much. That was really what made us buy it, was the packaging, if we're being totally honest. Um, and it has broken. So it's it's broken at the back. So this is what it does when it's closed over now. It's not um, kind of aligned. I can align it and push it into place, but it's a bit of a pain. So basically like a bit of the hinge at the back has popped off. And my whole plan, the whole reason I pushed through using this awful powder was that I was going to repurpose this packaging, put something else into it. Whereas now that it's broken, I'm a bit like, is it even a point? Ugh, I don't know. But the packaging is beautiful. So I would like to find something to use it for. But the product was terrible. So all in all, that was my five makeup items worth $150 towards my reverse rouge total. Last but not least, we have the skincare products that I've used up. There are 10 of these, they're worth $68.82. I finished up two makeup removing products. So the first one was the Garni Micellar Water. This was worth $1 for this size. I like this enough that I repurchased it, so quite happy and will continue to use it. I purchased this size last year and the whole reason I got this one in the smaller size was because I'm interested in trying the one that's the yellow one, that's like the oil and water that you shake up, but I'm a bit concerned that it'll irritate my eyes, so I wanted to get the small one of this so that I could finish it and then I was going to try a small one of that one. However, when I finished this and repurchased the other one, we were in lockdown and I just bought it from the supermarket, so the supermarket only had this version in the smaller size, so I repurchased this and I'm perfectly happy with it if I end up having to stick to this one I feel like this is going to be a long-term repurchase product for me, like, but I am interested in trying the one with the oil in it. The other makeup remover that I finished up, the Ren Perfect Canvas um, Makeup Removing Jelly, it was worth $4.80. I did like this, I hated this packaging, but obviously this is deluxe sample size. Oh throwing it away. Just hold it like this now because you, you've seen it, you know what it looks like. So yeah, this was a deluxe sample size so I don't know what the packaging is like on the full size product but the packaging in this was so hard, like actually squeezing the product out was like a workout. So if the packaging of the full size one is basically a bigger version of this, there is no way I would ever purchase it because it was such a pain to use. But I did actually like the product. I would potentially use the product again. It would just be very much packaging dependent. Removed makeup didn't irritate me again. As long as it doesn't irritate me or dry my skin out, that's really all I need from a makeup remover and the Ren one ticked that box. From Dr. Jart, I used up the liquid of their Ceramidin. 
um, range which I use as like an essence. It was worth $2.60. I would definitely like to have a full size of this. It's hydrating and soothing but without overwhelming my skin. So I also used up from this same range this little mini of their cream and this was worth $10. Now this is so good. It delivers so much hydration. It's very rich but without being too thick. Um, you know, it absorbs in really quite quickly. I really like everything about this. However, I use this very specifically on my eyelids when my eczema has flared up and I sometimes use it around the sides of my face and on my neck if I'm feeling particularly dry. I'm fairly oily and if I use this through the centre of my face, I am just blackhead central the next day. So this on its own is just a little bit too rich, whereas the liquid just really delivers that hydration for me, but it doesn't overwhelm my skin, it doesn't make me super oily or super blackheady, so I really would quite like a full size of this in my routine. But I do have other essences to use up first, so it won't be happening anytime soon, but I would definitely be interested in purchasing the full size of the liquid. In terms of serum, I finished up this one, which is from Dior, and it is their super potent serum, and it was worth $14.45 towards my reverse rouge total. I did like this, obviously it's going to be an expensive one to buy a full size of, and it was, it was nice, I liked it in the mornings, it gave a sort of nice sort of pearlescence to the skin which I enjoyed and it has niacinamide in it and I do feel I'm very spotty at the moment and I feel like I need to bring in something with a niacinamide-esque element into my skincare on a sort of daily basis, particularly now that I'm travelling into work again, I'm wearing a mask more often and I've definitely got that breakout around my jawline of mask knee as we're all calling it. So. I do feel like I want something with niacinamide in my routine and I did really enjoy the way this made my skin look. However, this year my skincare replacements are coming from my budget and I feel like this is just definitely going to be the year of budget friendly options of replacements. So I don't see a serum like this at this kind of price point being within my budget. The other moisturiser that I used up is this one from Drunk Elephant. This was worth $20.40 towards my reverse rouge and it is their Proteini Cream. Now, I've got so many moisturisers, so I will not be repurchasing any anytime soon, but I did enjoy this one, and I really like the packaging on the Drunk Elephant full size of the moisturisers. So obviously this was a little deluxe sample, so it's just a normal tub, but with the Drunk Elephant ones, they're in that tub that has the sort of pump on the top that you push down and it squirts up a little bit of product. So I feel like for that packaging alone, I could be talked into the full size of this product. And I felt like it, it moisturised my skin, it didn't overwhelm me, it didn't leave me super greasy, it sunk in fairly quickly and yeah, it just generally just really liked it. I feel like overall, particularly in terms of framing it through my budget, I would rather put my money into my serums than my moisturiser because I feel like your moisturiser is only ever really working on the top layer of your skin. So I feel like overall an expensive moisturiser, if I had to choose, which my budget is obviously going to make me have to choose, I feel like I'd rather have an expensive serum than an expensive moisturiser, but I did like this one. So we will see. I think I've got enough moisturiser to get me through this year and beyond anyway, so probably not going to be a problem anytime soon, but this would definitely be in the running for something that I would like to repurchase, depending on financial factors at the time. I used up an eye mask. So this was from the Creme Shop. It's worth $4 towards my reverse rouge. I really like this. I feel like some of the eye masks are definitely just, obviously, especially if they're just like the patches that go under your eye, they only really serve your eyes. These ones were really big. I think I took a photo of me wearing this one, so I'll insert it in if I did. But this really covers like your forehead and everything as well, so I feel like you get quite a lot of mask for your buck with these ones. I've said before, I feel like all of these masks really only do so much. They only can do so much. They're a one-use product. But I feel like it delivered on hydrating the area and sort of perking it up, so no complaints and would definitely get these again. And the last two products that I used, two sachet samples worth $2 each, so the Algenist Genius Liquid Collagen, which I actually really liked and I would potentially be interested in looking at the full size of this. Um, and then the Abel Royale by Guerlain, this is their serum I believe, um, which I thought was fine but I don't think I would rush to purchase it. Future Me cutting in here because I realised I didn't actually talk about this, which is the Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Hand Cream. So. This was worth $9.57 towards my total. I really liked this. It made my hands feel really moisturised. It felt really thick and nourishing, but 
it also would sink in quite quickly. The smell was really pleasant. It wasn't that eight hour cream smell. It was just quite a sort of clean smell, which I really, really like. I would definitely purchase a full size of this. I've got other hand creams to use up, but definitely purchase this one in the future. So those are all my skincare empties. And just to round off again, there are 10 of them worth $68.82. All in all, my empties altogether, I used up 26 products and they were worth $316.67. So on to the inventory update. So as I just said, 26 products used worth $316.67. I didn't declutter anything in this quarter and I added in six products worth $82. So what I added in was, for hair care I added in two boxes of dye, so one of them obviously was an in and out because it was used within this quarter as well, So, but it has to be counted in to be able to be counted out. So they were worth $5 each and then I also added in my replacement of the Davines copper mask that I'd finished one of, so that was worth $31, so that was three products worth $41 that were added into my hair care inventory. From hair care I used up $89.85 worth of products and that was across 11 items. So my new hair care totals for going into quarter two is that my hair care inventory is now worth $1,899.13. So that has gone down from originally being worth $1,947.98 and quantity wise I opened this year with 108 hair care products. I have added in 3, I have used up 11 and that has left me with 100 hair care products exactly going into quarter 2. So a reduction both in quantity and value which I'm very pleased with. Going on to skincare, I added in a body scrub worth $39. So that was actually a replacement. I have not finished my other body scrub yet but it has been cut open and it didn't quite make it into quarter one empties but it'll definitely be emptied within the next week or so. So that was a replacement product which I'm perfectly happy with. And then the other two products that I've added in are two sashi samples so they came with the Space NK order when I got the body scrub. So as you can see the Alginous Genius Liquid Collagen is there which as you saw I had used up so that's been an in and out product. And then the other sashi that I've got there is a little sashi of hand cream so I will definitely use that up with no problems. So in terms of skincare, I opened, so in terms of skincare, I opened 2021 with a skincare inventory worth $5,532.83. I have added in $41 worth of product this quarter and I have used up $68.82 worth of product. So that leaves me a closing total for going into the month of April of $5,505.01. So not the biggest reduction on value, but still a reduction and a reduction is a reduction and that's what we want. And then in terms of quantity, I opened with 253 items in my skincare inventory. I added in three and I used up 10, which has left me with 246 items. Again, quite happy. I feel like there will be a lot of skincare empties in my next empties. So I feel like we'll see a more dramatic change then, but in terms of ending this quarter, it's fine, it's gone down in both quantity and value and that is what we want. And in terms of the last two categories, makeup, I opened 2021 with an inventory worth $18,234.93 and I have not added in any makeup in the first quarter of the year. However, I did use up $158 worth of makeup, so that has left me with a total makeup collection worth $18,076.93. And then in terms of the quantities there, I opened with 820 items in my makeup inventory. I've used up five, so that has left me with 815 for going into quarter two. And then for perfume, there has been no change at all in my perfumes. I opened the year with $3,549.49 worth of perfume and that was across 41 items. And I haven't added in any and I haven't used any up within this quarter. So we are closing out the quarter with 41 worth $3,549.49. So my total changes overall for all four categories, I opened 2021 with $29,265.23 worth of beauty products. That was across 1,222 items. I have added in six items worth $82. I have used up 26 items worth $316.67 and I have not decluttered anything. So that means I am finishing quarter one 
in opening quarter two of the year with 1,202 items worth $29,030.56. So those are my inventory updates for quarter one. Thank you very much for watching this video. I know the numbers videos can be a bit hard to watch so I really appreciate it if you've made it to the end and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!